Hello and welcome. In today's video, I will show you the best way to validate a request in the Nest.js framework. But to learn how to validate data, I have to introduce a new concept first. So, at the beginning, we're going to talk about the Nest.js pipes. As usual, inside the description of the video, you can find the URL to the GitHub repo containing the source code. Ok, enough talking, let's get started. The Nest.js pipe is similar to the middleware in the Express.js framework. It's a function invoked before the execution of the controller's method, and it can override the incoming data. A pipe is a class annotated with injectable decorator, which implements the pipe transform interface. The pipe has two typical use cases. It transforms or validates data. The Nest.js framework has a plenty built-in pipes such as default value pipe, parse int pipe or validation pipe. They are all exported from the Nest.js slash common package. Having this information in mind, let's dig into the code. Firstly, we have to start our development server and database. To start the PostgreSDB, let's type the docker compose app inside the terminal window. This will fire up the database. Next, open a new terminal window and type npm run start colon dev. This will fire up the Nest.js app. Now, let's open the recipe controller file. Here, we have implementation of the CRUD operations for recipes. To be honest, the implementation is far from perfect. It's straightforward to break something by providing invalid data. For example, in getRecipe method, we take the ID parameter from the request. The database model required the UUID. So far, nothing stops us from sending any trash there. Let's see what will happen if I send a simple string instead of the ID. Ouch, 500 internal server error. Inside the logs, there is a message saying invalid input syntax for type UUID. That's correct, I have provided invalid data. But the app should be prepared for such scenarios. It shouldn't crash, definitely. To validate UUID, we can use one of the built-in pipes. It is called parse UUID pipe. When you examine the param decorator closely, you will see that it takes an additional parameter. After the param name, we can provide the pipes. Let's add here a new instance of parse UUID pipe class. Save the file and check if it works. Now, when I click send button, I will get a new error. Yes, it's a validation error. There is 400 status, error message, and what is the best, there is no crash of the app. Beside the get endpoint, we also use the params decorator in the patch and delete endpoints. Let's copy the UUID pipe and paste it to those endpoints. We would like to have the protection there as well. Great. Now we can implement validation of a request body for POST endpoint. To accomplish that, let's move to the recipe DTO file and think shortly what we want to protect. In my opinion, there is no sense of having a recipe without description or recipe missing ingredients. We have to make them mandatory. Currently, I can save the invalid recipe without receiving any errors. I'd like to see their bad request response instead of 200 status. Generally, in Nest framework, we have two ways of validating the request body. We can use schema-based validation or use class validator. In my opinion, the second approach is better. We have the DTOs already and we only need to add some decorators. So let's use the class validator. For that, let's open a new terminal window and install required packages. The class validator package is in charge of validation, while the class transformer is used to transform plain JavaScript objects into ES6 classes. When the installation has finished, please go once again to the recipe DTO file. There, under the description field of recipe type add is not empty. This decorator of a class validator package Make sure that the description field has some value. If it's equal to null, 
undefined or empty string, it will throw an error. Let's save the file and test it in the Thunder client. When I send the empty description, nothing will happen. The validation won't work. It's because the decorator itself is not at all. We have to connect it with the nest pipe. Let's open the recipe controller file and search for create recipe method. Inside the body decorator, we have to add a new validation pipe. The validation pipe is another of built-in Nest.js pipes. It basically tells the Nest.js framework that it should invoke the validate method for that specific DTO object. So now, when we try to send the empty description once again, the response will be different. Now it's 400 status and error message. No recipe was created. Cool, that's what we wanted to. But that's still not enough. Nothing stops us from sending some number as description instead of a text. For that type of protection, we have to add the isString decorator. I think that the description should have some minimal length as well. Let's say 10 characters. To restrict that, we can use the min length decorator. I encourage you to check the class validator documentation. There are plenty of decorators to learn and we won't learn all of them today. Okay, but moving back, let's check if the decorators work. Now, when I send the numeric description, there is a validation error. Moreover, when the description is too short, there is also a validation error. So far, so good. Now, let's validate the ingredients. Similarly to the description. It's good to check the type of a field. For array, there is is array decorator. Then we can expect that the array have at least one element in it. For that, there is array min size decorator. Let's set it to the one. Now, when I send the empty ingredients array, I will receive an error. In fact, I got two because the description is too short. The validation errors are additive. So, uh, when there is more than one, you will see them all. What we did so far is only the validation of the array type and size. To validate elements of the array, we have to add two additional decorators. The first one is called validate nested. If used, the framework will fire the validation method for objects inside the array. To validate all of the objects inside the array, we have to set the flag called each. Then we have to use the type decorator. It's mandatory to use it when validating nested objects. We have to return there the type of a nested object. Now we can actually validate the ingredient type. Let's copy the is not empty and is string decorators. This will be enough for the name validation. When we test it, you can see that the name of the ingredient is mandatory now. Next, for the unit type, we will again use the isNotEmpty decorator. The unit is an enumeration object. For enum, there is isEnum decorator. There, we have to pass the enum itself. As you can see, there is small TypeScript error. We have used the enum before its declaration. To fix that, we can move the unit enum to the top of the file. Now, let's save the file and check if it works. Yes, when I send the non-existing enum case, there is a validation error. For the last field, we will also use the isNotEmpty decorator. It's a numeric field, so then I will add isNumber decorator. Finally, there is no point of having zero or less ingredients so I will add a min decorator and set it to 1. Again, we can test it in the Thunder client. Yes, validation works. In our app, we have another DTO object for updating the description. Let's copy and paste the decorators from the recipe DTO. As you can remember, we have to use the validation pipe inside the body decorator to make it working. But when the app is growing, this task becoming tedious. 
there is a better approach. Let's delete all of the validation pipes from the controller file and move to the main TS file. Here we are bootstrapping the app. The NestJS app has a few very useful properties and one is called use global pipes. Here we can set the validation pipe. Now the validation is on for each endpoint from our app. If you don't believe, let's check it in the Thunder client. Yep, validation is still working correctly. So cool. So today we have learned what are the NestJS pipes and how to use them for request data validation. That's another huge step forward in learning the NestJS framework. Good job! Next time I will show you how to use configuration file in the NestJS project. Meanwhile, thank you for the watching and see you next time.